I am so thrilled to bring on my special guest in just a moment, Randy Kay, who I believe is carrying a prophetic and timely word for where we are right now in God's prophetic timeline and history. This is somebody who's not only a lover of the scriptures, but he has experienced the heavenly realm. And I love it because you know, destiny image. People think, okay, destiny image. You guys love the supernatural stuff. I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna bring him on. I want to say this actually while I have uh, Randy on with me. Randy K, brother, it is a good. It is a joy to have you with me. It's an honor to be with you, Larry. I I truly appreciate uh, this time with you. Well, and you know, I said I was gonna say this apart from you in my little intro. But I want to say it with you because you know we publish a lot of people who have experienced um, what we call an NDE, a near-death experience. You have done so many videos with Sean. You have a program on Sid Roth. I gotta tell this, I gotta tell the folks watching about you, what I admire, what I respect, because people wonder, how do you know, Larry, if these are true accounts or true experiences? I can usually tell if they're true because a person will always carry a perpetual sense of awe mm. and wonder. And Randy, you you have <laughs> never graduated. I feel the presence of the Lord as I say this, but you've never graduated from the awe and wonder of what you saw and experienced in heaven. So grateful for you. Well, likewise, Larry, you know, uh, we have an opportunity to set a record on this program. And that would be if I do not tear up, <laughs> then this will be a first ever in speaking about uh, heaven or uh, any of the experiences with our Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, one of the one of the facets uh, that we know, and even from the Apostle Paul, who spoke about the uh, third being in the third heaven, and he spoke yes. in the third person, right? So he, you know, he, he, he wrote about a friend, he said, uh, 14 years after his experience, and I shared my experience uh, 14 years also after it happened, uh, and we don't know if he was being humble about his experience and not wanting to speak in the third person or not, but he didn't get into the details of his heaven experience because he said they were uh, too great for any man to, uh, to, to boast or share, uh, as he said in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, where he shares that experience. So um, I've often asked the Lord, why these experiences are coming out. And of course, some of us, like yours truly, uh, have medical records to show that we, I, you know, we indeed flatlined, and for my case, a little over 30 minutes, uh, which is confirmed through, the, through uh, the records. But the Lord was speaking throughout this process, as you said, noted, um, Sean and I, and I've interviewed, we had the program on Sid Roth, um, that the Lord is specifically revealing these stories for a prophetic reason, because even the apostle Paul talked about heaven. We should be living according to the dictates of heaven and, and heaven in and of itself is prophetic. And that everything that is manifested on earth that is good is first manifested in heaven. And so that's why I believe that these heaven experiences are prophetic for this day and age because God has ordained or chosen to release these for these uh, last days in which we live. And isn't that the heart of the Lord's prayer? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. And both of your books, at least the, book, you know, the books I know that we've helped you um, steward, Revelations from Heaven, and then what we're going to talk about today, Heaven Stormed, what you, what you bring is biblical, it is backed by scripture, but I believe I, I, what I love is there's also insights. There's also um, there's things that I believe that will help us navigate the present life, this present world that we're living in. In other words, what you share is not detached from reality. It's not, oh, yeah, this is what's happening kind of way out there. I believe God's heart is to bring heaven into the earth and see more of heaven's influence in the earth. So. All of that to say, Randy, I want to put the camera on you. This new book is very unusual. It's very unique. It's already having a significant impact. But the Lord really gave you some perspective. You share whatever you feel a grace or release to share about. But the Lord really gave you some clarity um, and insight on the coming days concerning the end times, outpouring, tribulation. So I want you to go wherever the Holy Spirit leads and just share with the people what, what specific or unique aspect of heaven did you feel led to share in this new book, Heaven Stormed? 
Yes. Well, the Lord, our Lord Jesus told me specifically when I was in heaven with him that I was not to share about the storm until he gave me a word to do so. And that was an edict that he gave me and he called it the storm. So I think it's helpful to put this the storm in context because it's not just a creation that uh, I came up with. Uh, the storm is referenced in the Bible. Nahum uh, 1.3 talks about the Lord's way are in the whirlwind and the storm. And in Jeremiah 14.3, uh, when the Babylonians were coming against the Jews, uh, the Lord came in the whirlwind. Job also experienced the whirlwind and the Lord's presence. So the storm is very much biblically centered uh, and how it references itself in, in uh, my account was relative to the last days. So I realized uh, kind of after the fact uh, because the Lord did speak to me of the time, the moment, and also the signs that I explain about in the book that indeed I was to share about the storm. So even though I had shared uh, my experience in heaven, the exception to sharing that experience was specifically about the storm, being in the throne room of God. Now, I had been with uh, Jesus, Larry, for the entire time, but uh, he was waiting uh, during this time, he told me we would go to uh, the throne room, uh, but there would be this this kind of this process that he was bringing me through, life reviews, how he was redeeming my life because I had a troubled childhood. I was a very sickly kid. And so he showed through a series of life reviews, something was very intentional throughout all of my life as it is for everyone who is in Christ. And he was showing how he's how he weaving through my life, even the times when I had failed him or, or I had suffered, to bring forth a purpose through that that was redeemed through uh, the purposeful uh, nature or supernature of Jesus Christ. So after he had done this and walked me through and shown me all of the kind of the glory of heaven and the paradise and so on and so forth, there was this time where he was bringing me before the throne. And I didn't know, of course, what that entailed. Uh, here I was with Jesus. Jesus and the Holy Spirit were of, of like manner, but spoke to me very differently. The Holy Spirit was uh, my the one who had been with me all of my life, well, all, certainly all of my lifetime in Christ. And the Holy Spirit was speaking and imparting understanding to me while Jesus was, um, well, we're not, we're not going to break the record, Larry. Jesus was by my side imparting the, this love, consummate love. And, uh, and so he was, for the first time, he was, he was, he, he said he was going to be departing from me. The Holy Spirit was still with me. And I looked upon the throne and God the Father was massive and glorious in appearance. And all of the angels were surrounding the throne. And Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit were one. There was no distinction uh, between them. And the, the, the angels, and one angel, by the way, was speaking forth with a voice or a song that was at least 10 times that of a human voice. Now, expound that tens of thousands of times, and you can just have an inkling of the imagination of what was going on at that time as they were declaring the glory of God, singing his praises around the throne. And I noticed that there, was, there were blue uh, kind of sapphire colored stones around the throne. And uh, the, the, uh, the humans, I saw the angels were walking above them, but the humans were walking through the fire being emitted through these stones. And I asked the Holy Spirit what that was about, why the fire was not burning the humans who are walking through it. And he said it was because 
my spirit, the Holy Spirit was in them, and the fire does not burn those who are filled with the Holy Spirit. And I remembered the pillar of fire that preceded the Jews as they were uh, exiled from, uh, from uh, Egypt, and how the pillar of fire was the presence of the Holy Spirit. And we know the fire that was consuming the bush as Moses was there. And that was the fire of the Holy Spirit that I was seeing being uh, spread forth, but it did not burn. It actually comforted. But here was the Father at the throne of God with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And I realized what was being done at the throne room were the declarations of God. I saw the prayers being ushered forth from earth, from earth, from the people of God's children. And they were being felt. They were being, I could actually see them with my spiritual eyes. And God was declaring answers through those prayers. But then he said something, but was, was preceded by his declaring this one thing, was that all of heaven became a deafening, silent place. I say deafening silence because I've never heard such a contrast from the paradise and the, the, the praise, the worship that was around the throne room. And all of a sudden, heaven ceased in its expression of all of these things as there was silence throughout all of heaven. And I knew there was a shift. There was a shift. And God the Father with Jesus declared these words, it is finished. It is finished. And the storm began. And the storm began. Jesus took his hand and cupped it over my eyes. And he started showing me people who were going through all kinds of suffering. All of those who were crying forth with sores and all, all kinds of horrific things. And I, and I asked Jesus, I said, please stop. I can't take it. I can't take it. I had been in paradise and everything was joy unencumbered, which is the ethos of heaven. And he did remove his hand from my eyes. And then he showed me another vision, and that was of people praising him, the glory of God being poured forth from heaven as declared from the throne room of God. And I could see the emittance from heaven and people praising, people being healed, people walking forth from their deathbed. I could see just the, this, this, presence it was like a a covering of a of an of an orb of sorts it was incredibly amazing spreading forth throughout the globe and i could see this euphoria being emitted from earth and i knew that this was the glory of god being poured forth on earth and then there was another advent that Jesus was showing me through all of these times of the storm. And I could see the angels descending like brigades of angels upon the earth as he was sending them. And I could see the place of Israel and the place of Israel. And I could see the battles that were going on. But I looked at Jesus and he was mounting this white horse. And, he, and the tassels were dipped in blood. And I knew that was his blood. And he was mounting them as well as the angels in preparation what was to come. And then Jesus was by my side again. And I could see the book of life on the on the the the. the crystal glass, whatever it was, table before the throne of God. And I saw the seal over the book of life. And I knew implicitly that this was the blood of Jesus Christ that had sealed the book of life. And he said, your name is in this book. Because I was a believer when I went. And he, he picked it up. 
and he was reaching out and, and I, he was he was ushering me to to hold the book of life and i was saying jesus i cannot hold this book no only you only you only you and and he reached out in the holy spirit now my my spiritual body is different was different from my physical body my spirit body was uh, almost translucent and for the first time i could see the holy spirit reaching in to my hands i could i could see it with my spiritual eyes reaching into my hands equipping me i guess you might say to hold the book of life and I held the book of life in my hands. I have never felt such, so humbled in my life as to hold the book of life in my hands. And Jesus declared a name that he said I could not usher forth. I could not say it through my own lips when I returned because he told me I would return. And he, he shared it. And I know exactly what it meant, and it it spoke uh, spoke to me. Uh, and if somebody reads the book, I knew he told me I couldn't speak it, but I do share it in the book what it was, and it hit hit home who I was. And he gave me a name in heaven, and I don't know if people everyone has a a new name in heaven. I believe that's very possible. It certainly was for me. And then he took the book from me. After I'd had this expression of the word of God, not as pages just in a book, but the very presence of God. I never, I never really understood the word of God in its entirety. And of course, in first in John 1, 1, and, and the, the word in the beginning was the word and the word became flesh. And I never understood exactly what that meant. And then I knew it because the word was God's presence speaking forth, speaking forth life. And the word of God, the word of God was being spoken forth each time I was seeing these things poured forth. And then he mounted his horse and descended. And Larry, I'll end with this because I also saw, as I write about the new heaven and the new earth, but he descended and it was indeed finished. Mm. As God had spoken from his throne. Well, and like I said at the beginning, as I just, as you were just sharing, you feel the presence of the Lord on that. And even for those who are watching, I want to encourage you again. This is, yeah, the book is wonderful. Heaven Storm. This is the strangest book promotion I could do because it, it's a wonderful book. It's a wonderful testimony. But can I encourage you? What's wonderful about it is not just getting a resource. It gives you perspective. Randy, as you were sharing, it gives us heaven's perspective on what God is doing. And yes, so many see darkness and deep darkness, and that's in the earth. And we are going to see angels being dispatched and deployed. Even as you shared that about Israel, you feel the presence of God, the strength of God on that testimony. But then when you talked about people being healed and notable miracles taking place, pl please understand, I believe this prophetic word that Randy's carrying in this book, Heaven Storm, it gives you end times perspective. And I'm going to have you end, uh, Randy, with whatever you sense in your spirit. But all I can think of is Isaiah 60. That, that gives us a beautiful contrast of what we can expect in the days ahead. And your book really reiterates this. There will be darkness, gross darkness, deep darkness. But then simultaneously, it says, arise and shine for the glory of the Lord is upon you. And I believe God, for the people of God, that glory will be upon us to a superior level than the darkness is ravaging in the earth. And I believe it's the people of God filled with the wonderful Holy Spirit that Randy articulated beautifully. He's a person. And when you share about his personality, Randy, we think to ourselves, he's not just some force or he's not this impersonal wind. He is a person that comes and walks alongside of us. I believe the Holy Spirit is preparing you 
for the days ahead to be filled with, saturated by his glory. Uh, Randy, what, just what final thoughts do you want to share with the folks who are going to be watching? Well, I'm so glad you said that, Larry, because if we don't understand the love of God, we cannot understand the end times, certainly not the, the last days as it's expressed in the book of Revelation, because everything is done out of love, consummate love throughout this. Even, even during the tribulation, there is an absence of love. And, and it's not God's fault. It's not God who is saying, I want to do this. It is the accumulation of sin throughout the ages. Yeah. So it was the removal of his protection from that. See, there's a culmination of righteousness. And this is something that I'll, I'll end with, Larry. Yeah. And that is, I was a little bit, I didn't know why these things were being revealed to me in an order that I did not really expect. I expected the glory, the rapture, the glory of God, the tribulation, and the Holy Spirit uh, uh, explained it this way. He said, uh, how, how, do you, how do you see yourself in a mirror? And I knew the verse, you know, we, now we see it dimly, yeah. then face to face. I was reminded of that. And I said it in reverse. He said, well, there was judgment, the Holy Spirit explained. There had to be judgment before mercy was rendered. There had to be judgment before mercy was rendered. But all this time, there was, a, there was a dirge, a lamentation in heaven for the lost. And I heard it. I heard it. I heard the Lord's heart for the lost. I heard the cry of the Lord for the lost and for his children. He would save his children. He would save his children, but also he would get every last opportunity for mm. those who did not know him. And that was all done out of love because as we know, God is love. He's consummate love. He's the person of love. So if you, if you read about it and you think, oh, God is a God of, you know, anger and, you know, all of this, you, you really have missed the point because God is a God of love. And all of these things are done from the heart of love, not a heart that desires to destroy but a heart that desires to give life yeah. and life everlasting in heaven. Wow. Wow. And again, I encourage you. I, I think of the book of Revelation starts with the revelation of Jesus Christ. It doesn't start with the revelation of the Antichrist, the mark of the beast, one world currency, all the things that sometimes, listen, we talk about, we can teach you about, totally fine. But when it comes to the revelation, the unveiling, the apocalypse of Jesus um, I, I love the context you put it in, Randy. It is a revelation of one who loves, loves fiercely. Maybe, yes. maybe that's how we understand the wrath of God, the wrath against sin, sin that steals and kills, destroys and malangs and distorts. Um, his anger is not towards people. His wrath is not towards people. It's towards that which destroys his beautiful purpose. And yes. Ra Randy, Grateful for you, grateful for your voice, and grateful once again for how you steward this word of the Lord. And furthermore, how you carry it with such honor and scriptural integrity. Um, that is a rarity. That's a blessing. I do want to encourage all of our folks. Number one, the book is called Heaven Stormed. It is available now. I'll put a little banner up at the end. Randy, where's a good place for people to connect with you and your ministry as well? Uh, I can be found at randyk.org. And you can find out all of the stuff that's going on. And uh, yeah, so. And you have a, co now, can we announce this, that you have uh, any kind of events coming up? I was yes. going to, uh, I didn't know if it was secretive yet, but the, you have a yes. conference coming yes. up. Yes, I hope to see you there. You and I, the I, I Destiny know. Image yes. crew. Yeah, uh, so uh, we're, we're hosting a Heaven Encounters uh uh, event, uh, September mm. 12th through the 14th. It's on that site, randyk.org. And we having John Burke there, Jim Woodford, uh, mm. Dean Braxton, uh, uh, Rita McPherson will be there. Just, it will be the large, I think the largest gathering of Christ honoring, uh, afterlife. I call them afterlife survivors. And that's the key. Yeah. Yeah. This is all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And we are inviting people. So it's an opportunity to, to meet face to face. You know, Larry, I, I've met Jesus face to face. 
and nothing will ever compare. But I so much enjoy meeting his children face to face because I see his presence in them. And um, it's our it's an opportunity not just to to hear some great speakers, uh, but also to uh, make new friends and to fellowship and to pray with one another. Yeah, your hearts will burn. I have a feeling people are going to come and your hearts will burn with fresh zeal and passion for Jesus, because that's the wonderful thing. You named a lot of names that we're very familiar with. And we love being around them because truly they have not graduated from the awe and wonder they carry from those encounters with Jesus. So bless you, Randy. Thank you so much for being part of this. And you are just such a wonderful friend to what we're doing here at Destiny Image. And we're grateful for you, sir.